The fundamental tension that we have today in autonomous driving is what is gonna be the correct strategy? Is expensive hardware that's coming down in costs, so the strategy that Waymo and Cruz are using, is that gonna come down fast enough to make vehicles cheap enough that the redundancy and the better system that you can build with more sensors, is that gonna be ultimately a better economic model than the Tesla model, where the vehicle itself is theoretically gonna be cheaper because you're only using vision, but the bet that you're making is that artificial intelligence is gonna be good enough and the compute power that you have to build to actually build the AI model is going to be cheap enough and scalable enough that that is gonna be your competitive advantage. There's a real tension here. And a lot of the discussion that I'm hearing around autonomy focuses on the wrong things. We're throwing around numbers like a Waymo vehicle today costs $250,000. That very well could be the case today. But Waymo as it exists in 2024 is still building these custom monstrosity vehicles. They are not mass producing vehicles by the tens of thousands. That could be coming. They have a new partnership with Hyundai where they're just gonna take an Ionic 5 off the production line, add their sensors, and vehicles should be basically ready to go. Pretty reasonable to think that that cost structure is gonna come down from 250,000 closer to 100,000. Cruise, on the other hand, is gonna be using their next generation Chevy Bolt, which is due out by the end of 2025. That is supposed to be the cheapest electric vehicle on the market. So that would indicate that it's gonna be about $30,000. Add in some sensors, which GM, which owns Cruise, could do in line as part of their production process, very possible that that whole sensor suite only adds 10 to $20,000 to the cost of that vehicle. What is the trajectory of those hardware costs? Typically over time, technology gets cheaper, chips get cheaper, sensors get cheaper. In 2015, a LiDAR system that went on a Waymo vehicle cost $75,000. That cost is now down to about $500 and projections are that the sensors will be less than $100 within the near future. This is the same trajectory we've seen with computer chips, with, with solar panels, with basically everything in technology. Once the technology improves, you start to scale, the hardware itself becomes very, very cheap. So what's the counter to that? And this is really the thing that Elon Musk has been focused on for years now. If you go back to when Tesla made the decision to go with a vision only AI powered system, his criticism has always been that the sensors were too expensive, that you weren't gonna be able to build a $30,000, $40,000 vehicle using things like LiDAR and radar. That's why Tesla has the system that it does. That's why Tesla is still only level two autonomy, whereas Cruise and Waymo are level four autonomy. Now we have a little bit better timeline about what Tesla thinks the future of its robo-taxi business is gonna be. They think that they're gonna get vehicles on the road as early as 2027, so about three years from now. A lot of work to do in the meantime. FSD is not approved to be unsupervised, so that hurdle needs to be crossed, and they need to actually build the robo-taxi or robo-cab as they are sometimes calling it. And Musk said that that whole cost structure is gonna be about $30,000. That's just for the vehicle. But here's what they're not talking about. They are not talking about the money that Tesla is spending to build these massive data centers. The other thing that Musk often talks about is the compute that you need to build these AI engines. The reports are that Tesla is gonna have 85,000 NVIDIA H100s by the end of this year. That is somewhere between three and $4 billion of chips alone. So we're talking more than $5 billion in infrastructure costs likely. That's on top of the cost that it takes to run those systems. There is also a scaling effect when it comes to artificial intelligence. So yes, the system can get better when you add more compute, but that compute goes up exponentially. It doesn't go up linearly. So the next system may cost $50 billion to build, not $5 billion to build. And what we know today is that FSD, as it exists today, is not anywhere close to safe enough to be fully autonomous. Depending on the estimates that you see, there's between 75 and 350 miles between each disengagement. That number needs to increase to around 100,000 miles between each disengagement, and probably higher than that in the future. So what's gonna solve that for Tesla? More data and more compute. That is gonna be a very expensive piece of this picture that we also need to consider. So this is the collision that's happening today is the hardware cost for Waymo and Cruise and Mobileye and the other companies that are building similar technology stacks, is that hardware and compute cost gonna come down fast enough to make autonomous vehicles viable? 
Or is the Tesla vision of having a relatively inexpensive vehicle, but a very expensive AI stack behind it, is that gonna be the better vision? Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. This is the framing that I think we need to think as investors in any of these companies. And the way that I'm thinking about it today is what is proven and what is not. And I wanna go with technology that is proven and then the cost can come down after that. So is a Waymo vehicle currently $250,000? Sure, that's probably the case. But Waymo and Alphabet, not an automaker. So it's very possible that General Motors and Cruise are gonna be able to build a more cost-efficient vehicle. Even the Bolt that they're building this on top of is about half the price of the Ionic that Hyundai is making for Alphabet. So maybe cost isn't the focus for Waymo right now because that's not really what Alphabet does well. They don't scale hardware particularly well. On the other hand, there are companies that do that well. General Motors and Cruise. Mobileye is working with Volkswagen and Zeker and other companies. They could use their drive technology to build a much more cost-efficient vehicle and scale that, maybe even tapping into something like the Uber network. Lots and lots of different ways that this could play out from a cost reduction standpoint, but I think that's really the safest bet in this market right now because we know that the technology works, that it's safe, that it can get regulatory approval. Now it's just a matter of bringing those costs down. And we have seen that happen over and over and over again in technology. Tesla, much different story. We know that they can make a relatively affordable vehicle that just has cameras in it and then enough compute power to run the AI model. But can it actually build a AI model that is safe enough to drive fully autonomously. That is not proven yet. Yes, it can get to the point where it's a very good level two autonomous system where it's helping drivers be a little bit more efficient, a little bit safer, but absolutely not at the point where you can take the driver out of the equation. When will that happen? Is that gonna happen next year? Is it gonna happen in five years or 10 years? Is that gonna take another $5 billion of investment or is it gonna be $50 billion of investment? We just don't have the answers to that. So as an investor, I think the lowest risk highest reward opportunity in this market is those companies that have proved the technology and now it's gonna be a matter of making their hardware more efficient and just scaling that over and over again around the world, tens of thousands of vehicles at a time. Much, much higher risk to take Tesla's business model, which yes, has a lower cost vehicle, but has a ton of infrastructure costs behind that and has not yet proven to be safe enough to get regulatory approval to actually be on the roads. Kind of a critical piece there. So that's the way that I'm thinking about the battle between costs and technology in autonomous driving. I think that's worth considering for investors, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.